Hi folks, Harry Frank from Gray Machine here. And in this tutorial, I wanna cover a concept that I've used for quite a number of years. I've just never really gotten around to recording a tutorial on this, uh, which is automating uh, highlight or rollover effects in After Effects. And you can do this with text or shape layers or solids or anything uh, like that. And this is just kind of an automated process. And this is one of those things where if you had to manually animate this, this would kind of be a nightmare. And expressions make this so much more easy. So anyway, I'm going to jump to a blank composition that's just got uh, some random words. Like this was uh, from a random word uh, website, which uh, just pulled some random words for me. I'm going to have these follow a null object and uh, expand or get uh, larger when the null object gets closer to the layer. So first, I'm going to make a null object. And I think I just called this center before. Let's uh, rename this center. This is the center point that it's going to be follow, following. Now, uh, for this to visually make sense, uh, I thought having a pointer was a pretty good idea. So we'll make a polygon, oops, not a mask, but an actual shape layer. So I'm going to double click on this polygon tool. Go into the polystar path points and just make it a three point, uh, three pointed polygon, three sided polygon, which is basically a triangle. Um, I'm going to change the color of this to something a little less brown, a little more yellow. And let's rotate this so it's pointing like that. And we'll parent this to the null. And let's put it right there. I'll scale this down. And of course, it's a shape layer, so it's uh, centered around an odd point. So let's just do that, just to keep things nice and clean. So there, we've got our null object and my shape layer so it's going to move around. So uh, let's start with one of these words here, um, Lusitania. I like that one. That's a good word. So uh, we're going to make Lusitania get bigger as the null object approaches it. What we're going to be doing is using an expression called length. And length simply measures the distance from one point to another point in pixels. So in the case of making highlights like this or rollover effects, we can measure that distance and say, okay, well, if it's within a certain range, scale it up and then scale it back down. So let's, uh, let's do it. So I'm going to go to my text layer here and we are going to create two points that we need to measure. So we're creating the length. So we need to measure the distance between two points. So one is going to be the center null. So I'll just call this point A. So A is equal to the, and I need to get the position of the center. So A is equal to the position of the center. This comp layer center transformed up position. Great. B is going to be the position of the current layer. So that would simply be position. Now I'm going to simplify this and we're only going to be measuring the y axis. So in this case, I'm just going to be going up and down. So if you're going left to right, you might want to do the x axis or if you're moving all around. Um, but this will just keep things simple so that we're just going to be measuring the distance in the y axis. So position bracket one end bracket and position one in brackets there. So so now we need to measure the distance between these two. And we simply do that by typing length a comma b. So I've already assigned these variables to a and b. So we're going to measure the distance between the two. Now this is going to give me an error because length is outputting one single value and scale is an array. It has two different values that make up what it is. So we need to accommodate for these. So I'm going to assign this length computation to a variable. Let's put that up there. And then what I can do is simply assign S to both X and Y just by typing S comma S in brackets. Now this is going to kind of work, but we need to uh, adjust this. First of all, it's going backwards. It's getting bigger as we move away because the length is increasing as we get further away. Uh, also, we don't really have any way of limiting it at this point. It's just going to get bigger and bigger as I move the mouse away, which might be useful for you. But uh, basically, this is kind of backwards. So what we need to do is remap how S is behaving. 
So the way we're going to control the length here is by setting a linear relationship. And we can do this with an expression called linear. Now I'm going to change around my variables a little bit here. I'm going to make L equal to the length so that I can use S in this linear relationship. So I'll set S equal to a linear relationship. And a linear relationship looks at a specific value and it says, okay, look at this value as that value goes from one starting point to one ending point, output a different range of values in relation to that value. So in this case, we're going to look at L. So as L changes, we will output different values directly in relation to it. So for example, I'm going to say as L goes from 100 to 0, or I could say 0 to 100, doesn't matter. We can go do this either way. So as that length changes from 0 to 100, so what we're saying is it goes from 100 pixels away to 0 pixels and basically rolls right over it, that rollover point we're going to output a value of 200 to 100. So what we're doing here is we're forcing the scale to be limited between 200 and 100. It will never be any greater than either of these values. Now again, we can use uh, variables to make this a little bit more flexible, but this is just kind of our starting point. So 100 is going to be the distance in pixels that it will start measuring. So when this is greater, it just clamps these values. It can't be any greater than that. So as I move this closer, this will, at 100 pixels away, start to get larger. Now notice the, the alignment point right now is at the very bottom of this text. Now we can either compensate for that in the expression, or you can simply adjust the anchor point of the text to compensate for that. So it might be just easier to select all of my text, hit A, and shift the Y axis anchor point to be right in the middle of that layer. So now that rollover point peaks right in the middle of the text. Now, depending on how flexible you'd like to make this and, and plug in different slider values, when I set this up, I tend to use a few different sliders just to kind of make things a little bit easier. So let's go back to Lusitania here. So rather than fixing these values, I'll set a few different slider values on another layer so that we can adjust things like the maximum scale and the maximum distance it will look at to create that uh, rollover effect. So we'll be making a few more variables up at, there, up at the top, but first we need something to actually contain those sliders. I'm just going to reuse this, uh, uh, this null object right here. There's nothing wrong with that. So let's just apply a couple sliders to this. So we'll add a few different slider controls. One I will call the scale. So this will be the maximum scale that the text will scale out to. Uh, I'll call another one radius. So this is the radius that it will look at uh, to create that rollover effect. Um, I think I also created a slider to adjust for that uh, up and down point, which uh, I'm not sure if I'll use, but I'll keep that there just for now. So we'll call that one adjust. So let's actually set these to the values that we're using. So the scale seems to be about 200 and the radius we are scaling up. Uh, the radius that we're looking at is 100, which actually seems a little large for me. So I'm going to set this to maybe 50 dial it down a little 50 not 560 50 so what I need to do is grab those values and plug that right into my expression here so we're going to have I cannot use the word scale as a variable because that's a uh, reserved word so I'll just call this s max and then we'll pick with that scale right there and radius should be fine for a variable so I'll pick with the radius right there so I'm going to plug these two variables into my linear equation here. So the maximum value was 100, right? That's where we were searching, how far we were searching outside of the uh, layer. So basically the rollover distance. So we'll set that to a variable that is radius. And then the S max is the maximum value here. Now 100 is basically forcing the layer to be a scale of 100. If you like this to be a little bit more flexible, we could grab the existing scale before the expression executes, but um, we'll just uh, stick with the scale of 100 for now. Whoops, I'll grab that. So now this is still working just fine. 
Notice that the rollover distance is a little bit smaller, which I think works a little bit better. Now, uh, after all that expl explanation of using a linear relationship, I did that because a linear makes more sense than something like ease. Linear is a direct relationship. Notice that the motion is a little bit stiff. It's basically a linear relationship, just like a linear keyframe, which is a little jerky. So rather than using a linear relationship, I can simply change this to ease. And what it will do is kind of ease in and out of that. And I'll have a much more natural movement. So now I can adjust the overall scale that it uh, increases to as it rolls over. I'm going to move this. Uh, over there. And then I can adjust the radius so that it starts to react further or closer to the layer. I'll leave that at 50. So all we need to do at this point is get all of this stuff applied to all of the text layers. And the easiest way to do that is simply click on this and say copy expression only, select my other layers, and hit paste. Now as I drag this around, it's going to follow all the different text layers. Now, one other thing I did here is to make a highlight color. So as it rolls over, the text actually changes color. Now, getting into color expressions can get a little complicated because colors have a lot going on. There's red, green, and blue. And it isn't always easy to, um, to control these with expressions. So let's take a look at this, uh, this layer here. Now, if we did something like fill, if I go to generate fill, now the opacity of fill takes the entire opacity of the layer along with it, which I've always thought is a bad idea. But fortunately, with uh, later versions of After Effects, these compositing options have been added. So the effect opacity is right here. So you can always mix the effect opacity right here. So that's what I can use to control with uh, my expression. So I can fade the effect opacity on or off. So we'll make an expression for that, and let's look at our expressions here, and we're just going to copy and paste this in here. And what we want to have happen is as the null gets close to this layer, we want this to go from 0 to 100. So in this case, we're going to say the max is 100, and the minimum over here is 0. And we don't need to assign this to any sort of array because this is a scalar value, one single value that makes uh, it what it is. So I don't even need to assign that um, last thing to a variable. This last line here is what gets plugged into the value. So as this moves closer, it's going to change the color right there. I would probably uh, suggest going to our expression controls here, adding a color control so that we have a global color control right here. So instead of having this use a color that we need to manually control, I'll go here to my color control and link this fill color to the color control right there. And then all we need to do is copy this effect, the fill effect, and paste it to all of our layers. So that is everything but star light. There we go. So as this moves and rolls over each of these layers, it also brings uh, a different color which is really cool. Now, I, as I was planning this tutorial, I thought, well, you don't always have lists that are individual layers like this. Sometimes you want to copy and paste a large list in. Now, I actually went through and wrote a really complicated expression that looked at a list and used the source size of the list and all that kind of stuff. And it ended up being really unreliable. I found some weird stuff in there where I had to make like fudge factors that made it adjust a little bit. And what I determined was that it was actually a lot easier to use a simple uh, script to break your text layers into individual text layers. So I'm, so I'm going to go back to uh, one long list here. So again, this is just a, a long list of stuff here that doesn't respond to any sort of uh, movement at all. So what I need to do is take this and break it into layers. So this script is called decompose text. I got this off of aascripts.com. So with this decompose text script, I can go to decompose into lines. We will approximate the position without expressions because if you do it with expressions, it is very, 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 very slow. So let's hit decompose and it's going to do that thing with all these. And uh, apparently I already had the expression on there, so it's already working. Now, here's one other thing. Okay, in fact, this is kind of a good um, example. 
because all these layers didn't quite end up exactly centered and not really where we want them to be. Now I can select all of these and you know copy and move them like that. But what if you decide to group these all to a null? So I'm actually gonna I've got a null here. Let's call this group null. So let's say I take everything and put this uh, put it on this null object right here. So put that in the center and then select all of these layers and group these to the null. This way I can, you know, move the null around. I could, uh, you know, re uh, shift these around wherever I want to without having to select all the layers, which is great and totally understandable. Or maybe you want the list to move independent of the, the highlight area. So in this case, what we need to do is make an adjustment to this expression. So I've actually got this expression already written here. It's basically the same thing. The critical change is that remember when we were measuring position. So we were measuring position between one point and another point. So A and B. A was the current position of the layer and B was the position of that null that we were measuring the position to. So instead of using the position of the layer, what we need to do is convert the layer space from its current position to its two comp position, which is basically its uh, absolute position uh, after parenting. So the way we define this is by saying, well, which layer are we going for? That's this layer. And then we'll convert this layers layer space using two comp uh, and then in parentheses, we put 0, 0, 0 in brackets, and then I'm putting 1 because we're just grabbing the y-axis. So it's a lot of stuff there. So I'll make sure to uh, put this in the uh, the web page for a copy and paste. So I'm going to copy this, and let's go to one of my layers here. So I'll paste this and copy expression only, and we'll paste this to all of the layers here. Paste. Now as I move the group null, this reacts to uh, where that source null is right here. Again, these are all aligned to the bottom, so I'm going to select all these, hit A, and shift it up just a little bit. That's easy enough. I think that's easier than just adding it to the expression and making things more complicated. So anyway, that is how to work around uh, grouping them together in a null object. Now notice I've always been doing this about the uh, center point and keeping a centered list. If you want to do this uh, aligned to the left, you can do that. I just think aesthetically it doesn't look as good, but um, you can definitely do that. So it's going to look something like that. So uh, I just selected all of them, went to the paragraph control, and did it like that. So here's my uh, highlight null, and then here's the group null, which I can move a little closer and move this through the null as well. So either way. So a really cool way of making different highlight or rollover effects, you can do this with uh, solids or images or whatever. I tend to do this with text. Um, just makes a really cool way of, uh, well, highlighting or pointing things out. So anyway, hopefully this is uh, helpful. I'll post all these projects and expressions to my site um, for you to download. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.